Hello friends, how you doing? So it's been two months since I launched Noclip and I've still not managed to put out a new episode of my opinion show and partly that's because starting a business I sort of underestimated a little bit just how much work and how much travel was going to be involved in the first couple of months uh, and also because I kind of set this like internal bar for quality on the first episode pretty high like I wanted the first one to be really good so I wrote like four or five scripts and I'm not pulled the trigger on any of them and um, so in sort of in light of that in light of it being so long and in light of this week with the the game awards are on and I'm incredibly humbled to be nominated as trending gamer. Thank you so much to everyone who's been who's been uh, nominating me uh, for the award. But even to be nominated sort of allows me the space to talk about something that I wanted to talk about kind of since the minute I left GameSpot. Um, the reason I have it up until now is that I wanted to at least have one of the no-clip projects done so people could see, you know, I like the work to speak for itself. I don't like to just sort of like talk about stuff unless I've got proof behind it. And now I'm kind of ready to, to talk about this. And it's basically the idea that I spent like a good five years trying to break into the world of games coverage. Um, I've since spent five years in the game world of games coverage, two and a half in the UK, two and a half here in, in the States. Um, and I left GameSpot of my own volition, like completely, you know, I, I could have stayed if I wanted to, um, but I decided to step away because of sort of the the reasons, the, the biases and the opinions about games coverage that I have had since, you know, going back 15 years. So I kind of wanted to do like almost like a like a post-mortem, like a debrief kind of. Like I'm, I was in there for a couple of years, I saw what the hell's going on, and now that I've left and I've started my own thing, like what I think about games coverage, what I think about the future of it, um, and why I set up no clip in the direction I did. So I, I guess to go really far back, uh, when I was really young, when, when I were watching shows in, in Ireland and the UK, um, like, you know, Games Master and Games World and all these sort of, you know, video game shows that were aimed at kids. Like, when I was growing up with that, I thought, yeah, that's 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 cool, that's kind of fine. And then I became a teenager and, and the coverage around games in terms of uh, video, in terms of what was being broadcast on television, was like night and day with what was happening in print. Like, you'd show a sky on Sky like Gamesville, for instance. It was still, like, very much aiming towards, like, children. Uh, whereas at the same time you had magazines like PC Zone and PC Gamer doing incredible work um, on the written side. So I kind of grew up with this little bit of a chip on my shoulder because I thought what was happening was, you know, the people who were into games were reading stuff, right? But television and video is so much more mainstream and I thought that the people who were representing games were really dropping the ball. Like I felt like they weren't representative of sort of who we were as gamers, the things that mattered to us, it was like a cheap, tacky version of it. Um, and even like as so far as, you know, people would talk on radio about video games, I, I thought that those were like battlegrounds that didn't have good voices in them. So my first step into the media was working in radio in Ireland, and I, I worked at a radio station sort of um, when I was in high school and, and when I went, went through college, and I kept kind of working there. And one of the things I loved doing more, more than anything else was getting into debates about video games. And I was lucky enough to, to be in debates on uh, Today FM, which is one of the national broadcasters in Ireland, when I was like 18, 19 years old, you know, up against like the, the people who banned like Manhunt 2 from Ireland and stuff like that, and to have like intellectual conversations about that. I'm, sorry, I'm going to bring in Danny O'Dwyer, who is a gamer. He's from citizengame.co.uk and he reviewed Grand Theft Auto 4 on the program for us last week. Hi Matt, um, thanks for having me on. Just to say, first of all, that you know I back any sensible initiative to reduce drink driving on our roads. But uh, basically, that's the crux of the argument, Matt, and the, is that video games are different to movies because you're, in a sense, acting it out. But you're not. You're using a controller. You're not protecting the Earth from space invaders. You're not driving a car. You're not playing a guitar. And it was really important to me because I thought, like, forever the world of video games on video was represented by entertainers. And that's fine, and video games are entertainment, so I, I get the, like, correlation there. But all the people who were really smart, who were writing interesting things about games, they weren't the people who were in front of camera either. So I really thought that there was something like, not only like it was an interesting type of work that you could do, but more than anything else, I thought that it was something that needed to happen to, like, turn the tide on the way in which the sort of grander, you know, public perception of video games was. So by the time I was finished college, the sort of world of video uh, video coverage in video games were starting to really take off, and the reason for that was advertising. The the CPMs, the, the, the advertising rates on video were way higher than they were on, like, banners and whatnot, um, because the engagement rates were way higher, so it was sort of good for advertisers, they wanted to buy it, and then it was becoming more cost-effective for game sites like Get Good Cameras to, to make video, to put gameplay up, and bandwidth was costing a lot less than it used to as well. So there was a lot of um, artificial reasons why the video world was sort of taking off. 
And then what you had was you had a bunch of people who weren't necessarily working in video or working in that type of um, immediate sort of media, like radio and video are quite similar because you're just standing and talking to a camera or a microphone, or in this case, both. Uh, whereas written word is a lot more intentional. It involves like, you know, ruminating on a thought and then really like nailing the thought, but having time to do it. And what happened with games coverage was that you had a lot of writers then suddenly being put in front of video cameras. And that was fine, except it sort of had the opposite problem before, where you had people who were entertainers doing the stuff who were good in front of camera that didn't really know all that much about games. Then you had people who knew loads about games, but didn't really know how to vocalize properly how to, like, sort of, you know, get to the bones of an argument and, and really inspire um, the viewer in, in an interesting way. So that's the reason, I think, why YouTube and, and Twitch and everything sort of came up, because you had people who were just necessarily good at, at communicating over cameras um, filling that void. Uh, so I tried to do that sort of stuff freelance. I tried to I built my own website with a bunch of people I met on the GameSpot community, um, and we we did written stuff. We also did video stuff. Uh, we did podcasts. We tried to like train ourselves, uh, and then you know it took a long time for me to get my break in GameSpot. They they said no a bunch of times um, for when I went for job offers, but then when I eventually did, it was like really important for me right off, off the bat to work on stuff that I thought was. Um, entertaining but also sort of like informative and educative and interesting in a way that a lot of games coverage wasn't and the great thing was back then a lot of other stuff outside of i feel the mainstream press uh, especially youtube was was that that those things were happening those conversations were happening so i felt like i was part of a wave of like really good videos around games that weren't necessarily trying to just be sort of baity i guess the problem was the game sites were being baity and they were being more and more baity um, the advertising rates on videos started to decline, uh, as they had done with with, uh, with normal sort of advertising takeovers and banners on websites. Um, and then suddenly it became a numbers game. It became a numbers game in terms of the amount of views, but also the amount of videos you made. If you couldn't get enough views on a video, you just made more v videos and you got more views on those. Um, and that's the antithesis of making something that's good, making something that's quality, is, is, is that idea of churn. Um, and the problem is that that is built into the business model of these websites. It's the, the reality of them is that they need they employ a lot of people, uh, and they need to accrue as many views uh, as possible uh, as they can. And if they don't have people or they don't have productions that are getting those views because of you know some sort of inherent quality or that, that is in the video, then you just produce more and more and more of it. Um, and then I was sort of coming from the opposite side where I was like, no, 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 no. Let's just make, you know, let's make videos that are good. Or at least, like, we can make videos that, that are churny. And I was certainly doing that when I worked on the lobby. Like, there was, we made those, we did the talking points in the lobby were based on, you know, headlines. They were based on, you know, I mean, I'll come out and say it. They were, they were, I could make a clickbaity headline for a breakout on the lobby and get people to watch it. Um, and then we sort of had those, and that was kind of your bread and butter. But then on the other side, we did things like the No Man's Sky videos and the Witcher videos and all that. Um, and that was fun to do, and you felt like you were you had a little bit of leeway, right? Because you were working all, all all that stuff, but you know you could kind of do your passion project over here. That's becoming more and more difficult. We now have three major game sites, all of which cover movies. A lot of them cover comic books. A lot of them cover television shows. I mean, they're covering celebrities. It will won't be too far. We'll we'll have current events and sports on uh, IGN, GameSpot, and, and maybe even uh, Polygon as well. And I guess Kotaku also do some of this stuff as well. Um, that is a direct result of the lowering amount of money in uh, advertising. It hasn't done anything to do with quality of reporting. It hasn't anything to do with the, the quality of the work. I mean, it has something to do with it, but there is a sort of a diminishing returns when you're employing this many people and when you have a company this large and when you have a company, all these companies are owned by larger companies and they, they need higher returns. It's not enough to just keep the sort of lights on. Um, so what we have is another, it's, it's almost the same problem we had when I was growing up where the people who are representing games now don't represent games either because they're talking about things that have nothing to do with games, sort of under under the guise or under the auspices of this is geek culture or whatever. But, like, really, it's being done for financial reasons at the end of the day. And my problem with the way the games coverage is going is that everything that's happening with it, every sort of evolution, is based on the limiting business factors, not based on what's good, not based on 
you know, creative innovation or good video ideas or anything like that. They're chasing trends. They're chasing Let's Play trends. They're chasing personality trends, right? This big push towards personality on game websites. They're just following in the footsteps of what's happened on YouTube and what's happened on Twitch. It, it would be okay in my mind if that was based because of my stupid Puritan idea that people who work in games should care about games and should use the access that we have in the press to make stuff that gamers care about because gamers don't have the access that we have. So that's where sort of Noclip came in. I could have worked at GameSpot. I could have gone down the business route. I could have gone down the management route. I'm sure I could have gone down the personality route on, you know, either at GameSpot or somewhere else, or I could go down the advertising route, or I could, there's so many different ways that my career could have gone that would have been a lot more secure, at least you know, sort of in hindsight, I think it's it's fair to say I might have made the right decision in terms of the sort of like selfish, like business and personal side of it. But the whole idea of Noclip was that I wanted to like draw a fucking line in the sand. I wanted this to be the purest rebuke of a sort of an answer that exists within games coverage that I think is complete and utter bullshit. And let me just say, this is, you know, GameSpot were really good to me. They were incredibly good to me. I'm really lucky that I was afforded the opportunities that I was there. Um, I think they, they treated me really well. And it's it's not so much about about my where I used to work. It's, it's more the sort of like, because I could have gone to another side, right? So it's more the broader sort of like, idea I have about what's going on with the sort of leadership of, of games coverage at the moment, or at least the sort of trends that are happening, um, is that I wanted to like say that advertising should not be the, the fuel that powers these engines. Like I understand that it is a business reality within the current sort of paradigm of games coverage. Got it. I think that paradigm's fucked. I think we're circling the drain on that one. I think that's why you see a lot of turnover. I think that's why you're seeing game sites cover more stuff because at the end of the day, the momentum of games coverage is dictated entirely by how much they can sell space on, uh, on ads. So that's why we saw so much paid content uh, getting fed into games coverage, which is fucking awful. It's gross. Nobody likes it. It's awful. Like, it doesn't work. Like, I think the, the chickens are going to come home to roost on that one, like, any, mo any minute now because... I, I, I just think it doesn't work for anybody at all and everyone thinks it's gross and we think it's awful and as humans we figured out like we've already blanked out advertising but that stuff is so hard to blank out that we just react negatively to it and I think it damages brands um, but it just seemed to me that like in any other media like I'm sure it, it, business is the driving factor in so many different types of media right but within those media be it movies or music or journalism or anything good work can exist it just can't exist on the sort of like monetary scale that those big sites operate at and the sort of disgusting reality of that is that they're also sort of like the trendsetters because they've got the biggest voices so what i wanted to do with noclip was completely remove advertising from from the equation like entirely not like some sort of oh we'll do less of it and you know maybe and you know hey we're starting to do endemic now but hey this is our this is our list of things that we do to let it you know that we're not you know corrupt or anything like that's great that some people do that fine i wanted to just take it out like gone we're not doing it ever it's it's not a problem and then i wanted to take clickbait and do the same thing and be like we don't care about views. We're going to create a platform that is completely view agnostic. If 200 people watch these videos on YouTube, it doesn't matter because they are funded by the, the patrons, right? So presumably, I mean, the business model is we only care if the patrons are happy. From there, everything past that is a complete bonus, right? So obviously, like, I want to make work that appeals to lots of people. I want this stuff to be good because then it's worthwhile doing. So, like, essentially what I wanted to do is remove clickbait, remove advertising, remove paid content and deals with publishers and all that sort of stuff. And I wanted the only thing to matter about, and this isn't entertainment, this kind of exists a little bit in entertainment, but the only thing to matter about games coverage to be the quality of the videos, like the quality of the work. And if it works, then people will be into it and they'll fund it and they'll like it. And if it doesn't, then it'll crash and burn. And we've done it. You do not need advertising to run a business. Now, if you're a business at a certain scale that's already sort of stuck within that paradigm, yes, it's going to take... It's a difficult sort of pivot to make. I can appreciate that. But I wanted people who are getting into this line of work 
to not to not just think that you need to be a YouTuber who's doing entertainment, or you need to be uh, work at a game site which is, you know, biting this super fucking sour pill that you need to treat your audience like cattle in order to fund stuff that might be worthwhile. And that was the whole idea of Noclip. It wasn't to make me get nominated for an award. It wasn't to make it so that I didn't have to get up and go to work in the morning. It was the final act, or not the final act, but like the latest and purest act in what has been a lifetime of trying to prove one point, which is that people who work in games coverage should put games and gamers fucking first, and they should not be shackled by stupid, archaic, old ideas about business, which inevitably make, you know, spoil all the work that you could be doing. And, like, I feel like I've done it. Like, I'll feel better in a year, I'll feel better in two weeks, once we're, like, done and dust all these Doom videos are on the internet and, and people are enjoying those. I feel better every time we put out a project, but to launch the Patreon and to have that support and then to put the videos out and people be like, fucking yes, like, it was so important to me to be able to prove to people that it was possible to run a business like this on just the passion of gamers alone without any knee bending whatsoever to the so-called realities of the, of the media, right? Now what I want to do is I want to make it the biggest of everyone. I want it not to just be this, you know, this little upstart that's doing its own thing in the corner. I want to be able to ramp up to what I said we'd do, which is to get one of these out every month. Like, every, like, three to four weeks, bam, another one of these big projects. Every And just have a constant flow, so that a year from now, there's this massive library of these documentaries, and we keep making them more and more and more, about games, about developers, about gamers, about streamers, about YouTubers, about people who play games in weird parts of the world, about games that came in 20 years ago and I interview everyone associated with them and just have like a good pipeline for that stuff. And I feel like we're sort of on the way to doing that. But that's that's the new one. Like I'm very much like a sort of a like a like a dog. People say on like on Gaff and Reddit have said like like I'm super intense about this sort of shit. This is the only thing I've cared about in my professional career and like largely my life. Um up until I met my wife, so she can't, she heard me say that, she fucking killed me. But like, I literally like moved country over and over and over again to prove this point. And now I feel like I've done it, and it's very vindicating. But I also feel like it's sort of like the start of what I hope is a new type of games coverage. I think mainstream games coverage is doing, you know, a lot of work in terms of news. I think it's doing, you know, reviews are always going to be popular. Um, I just think that it is disappointing that we have to abide by so much clickbait and so much negative reporting to facilitate conversations about games or to drive them and i think the reality of of the way we have conversations about games has been affected by you know a decade or more of that type of behavior and if no clip can be part of a new wave of you know sort of analytical positive uh, authentic conversations around games that aren't just immediately going for the drama, then that is the trend that I would want to be known for more than anything else. Uh, and that's it. Sorry this wasn't scripted and really well edited and stuff like that. I'm home for a day before we fly down to LA uh, for the awards, um, which I'm hoping I'll spend most of the time handing out business cards to developers so we can get them to do documentaries with us. Um, but thanks for watching. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the work um, and for listening to me ramble. And f especially, you know, to everyone who watched my stuff for five years, uh, even before when I was running Citizen Game, um, that allowed me to put, put me in this position because... I want I want games coverage to get better more than anything else when it comes to games. And the fact that I could be even a small part of making that shift happen means the world to me. And I want everyone to know that I don't take that responsibility for granted whatsoever. And I've worked harder in the past two months probably than I have in my entire life. Uh, but every single second of it has been worth it because it's happening. Like, we're, we're making it happen. So, although award shows are silly and, and all that, um, I am really proud to be, to be uh, nominated for that. Because it means that people give a shit about this thing that I've given a shit most of my adult life at this stage. So... 
thank you so much for supporting the work thank you so much for for um for sort of backing me during this whole thing um i do think it's the start of what i hope is a is a monumental shift in in games coverage um, and if no clip can play a little bit of part in that um i'd be very very happy so thank you so much if you have any questions put them in the um, comments below and um, i got a pack for la uh, but i'll be i'll be on my phone and stuff um, checking them so uh yeah feel free to throw them in thanks again and talk soon